Welcome everyone back to weekly weather update and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar We'll run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days So it does largely look dry with around average sort of temperatures Potentially peaking maybe 20 or 21 through Tuesday or Wednesday But it does look likely through Wednesday to Friday we could see a weather front spreading through in the north and west Not only bringing cooler air but bringing some slow moving precipitation so yeah, the next five days looks generally dry, apart from that weather front that will spread through and give most areas maybe 6 to 12 hours of on and off light to moderate precipitation. We'll have a look at that in detail in a minute. Then we'll have a look at the longer range, look at the GFS, GM, East and DF and the ensembles. So it's looking increasingly likely now that the second half of this month, as we head into the last sort of 10 days, it's going to be really quite chilly, quite cold, end to September, we started very warm, and yet this end of the month is going to be very cold indeed, with majority of the uh, operational runs showing at least one or two northerly bouts, the ensembles pretty much showing average to below average temperatures uh, at the upper air uh, level um, for the next sort of 10 to 14 days, quite consistently, and there could be some real potent northerly winds coming up. Again, not expecting anything wintry, because we are still in the beginning of August, Autumn, but we could see frosts, even potentially ground frosts in southern England, maybe, um, which is really quite, uh, which is really quite early. Um, and yeah, temperatures could be quite low. Again, not stupidly low, but the wind chill and the feel like temperature will be cold. And so yeah, we'll have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video. So do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The links in description. So to start on the live radar, you can see once again, not, not, not too much is going on at the moment. Very low precipitation around a few showers across the West Midlands and parts of Scotland. Ideal conditions for the bank holiday and of course for the Queen's funeral. So I hope everyone is having a good day uh, of remembrance for the Queen. Um, and yeah, generally not too bad. Some sunshine around and temperatures aren't too bad at all. If we do put those temperatures on around half two as I'm recording this, you see loads of yellows and some, maybe some slight oranges so briefly higher than the last couple of days where we have had quite a chilly uh, feel after that colder northerly wind through Thursday and Friday um, that brought that chilly air mass which is going to be returning if not a bit colder in, in a few days uh, or probably about a week's time really um, into next weekend um and beyond but yeah not too bad at the moment it's going to continue to stay around this sort of average sort of conditions over the next few days there will be some chillier weather around but most of the time you can see in the south and the west um where we are uh where we have these warmest conditions maybe around 20 degrees or so peaking this week so if we do go over to the UKV and look at that showing over the next five days in terms of the precipitation and the temperature, uh, again you can see this afternoon there is a few showers around but mostly it's very dry with more uh, sunshine than this is showing. The cloud cover is breaking apart in places but there is still some cloud cover around so not too bad. When we have thicker cloud it's going to hold those temperatures down where we have more sunshine and allow those temperatures to rise a bit. Tonight, nothing too much is going on again. Perhaps a few, uh, perhaps a few areas of cloud, but maybe a few patched showers here or there. But again, nothing too much. You can see there is some thick cloud and some patchy rain approaching from the west tomorrow. But once again, nothing too much. But it's signs that more unsettled, more instability is pushing in from the west that will produce some more persistent precipitation later this week. But again, tomorrow it is largely dry. A few showers around within some thicker cloud. Uh, but yeah, that cloud will be quite extensive. Uh, but we could also see perhaps some glimpses of sunshine out there that will bring up the temperatures. As we head through the evening into Wednesday, you can see heavier precipitation starting to push into from the west and by Wednesday afternoon you can see a proper weather front starting to approach, uh, approach and it will arrive during Wednesday evening but most areas still are dry and relatively decent and warm through Wednesday afternoon. So during the evening that weather front arrives and it makes very slow progress eastwards. Thursday it's going to linger through parts of Ireland, parts of western Wales, northern England and Scotland for slowly progressing eastwards. It does fragment and lose its intensity and widespread nature as it spreads through. But by Friday afternoon it's perhaps lingering across the Midlands, perhaps into southeast England. And there'll be a lot of showers behind it, maybe some heavier showers there as well. We've got instability pushing in with the lower pressure. But this low pressure system is getting squeezed by two high pressure systems either side of it to our 
east and our west. Uh, and that will mean it will lose intensity later this week, but eventually it does clear through and there's just a few showers left by early hours of Saturday. So this weather front does move through very slowly considering it starts to arrive through Wednesday afternoon, but doesn't really clear the southeast until Saturday morning. So a good two or three days it takes to clear through here. So yeah, quite slow moving. And that's so why I said most areas will probably see six to 12 hours of thicker cloud on and off precipitation and showers. Some areas could even see longer than that. But either side of that, it won't be too bad. Yes, it'll be chillier and a few showers to the west of the weather front later this week, but it shouldn't be too bad at all. The reason why we're seeing this weather front, of course, is because we've got low pressure uh, and we have uh, clashing uh, air mass. So you can see colder air mass pushing away warmer air mass. That's why uh, uh, during the middle of this week, it could be quite decent. Still could see 20 degrees or so, but eventually a cooler air mass will move in. And you see those upper air temperatures down to the low single digits uh, and getting into the negative single digits there. That's the sort of air masses we're going to be seeing uh, quite consistently, perhaps through the last 10 days of September. So if we've finished from the UKV and have a look at the uh, temperatures at uh, the two metre level, you can see today peaking around 17, 18 degrees, so not too bad, but not massively warm either. Chilly though, where we have some thick cloud, you can see 13, 14 degrees in some areas in the East Midlands, so really not too great there at all, but it is all dependent on the sunshine. You see overnight temperatures are not too bad considering they've been mid to low single digits over the last few nights uh, and by early hours of Tuesday. Most areas are actually in the low teens, maybe a few areas getting down to sort of 8 or 9 degrees. By Tuesday afternoon, those temperatures actually rise a little bit higher, perhaps 18, 19 degrees quite widely, perhaps even peaking around 20 degrees in a few spots. And again, the nighttime temperatures not too bad. Low teens, maybe even mid-teens in the London area, uh, and again, maybe some rural 7 or 8 degrees. As we head through to Wednesday afternoon, you can see it's not too bad. Probably the warmest day we've had for about a week uh, and could be the warmest day we have for the foreseeable future uh, or maybe even until next year, perhaps. Again, you can't guarantee it. We can see warm weather into October, but this looks likely to be the last sort of warmish day in September with very cool upper air temperatures coming. So I doubt we'll be, getting, we'll be struggling into the mid to high teens uh, comes of this time next week but Wednesday could be quite pleasant 20 21 maybe 22 but cooling down from the north and the west and overnight because we have some clearer skies but um those temperatures do fall to the low teens maybe high single digits and by Thursday afternoon still could see 20 to 22 degrees ahead of the low but there'll be thicker cloud around or ahead of the weather front sorry, but there'll be thicker cloud around and it will be slowly cooling down and you can see cooler air cool cooler air mass behind it means it's quite cold early hours of Friday in the north and the west but by Friday afternoon you can see it is starting to cool down maybe touching on 18 or 19 degrees and you can see by early hours of Saturday, many areas in the north and west, at least more extensively, are in those mid-single digit areas. Uh, the south and east still mild, but will be cooling down considerably toward the, towards the weekend. And perhaps this time next week, Monday to Wednesday, next, this time next week, uh, we could be seeing another potent northerly wind bringing even colder air mass back in from the Arctic. So do have a look at that by going over to the GFS to see what's happening over the next couple of weeks. You can see at the moment we've got high pressure over the top of us, that's why it's largely dry uh, and those temperatures are not too bad uh, as we head through Tuesday and Wednesday before low pressure does move in, but it's getting squeezed by two high pressure systems, so eventually it does peter out. As we're towards the weekend, we have higher pressure building in into a generally chillier air mass, but it's not too bad. But this high pressure pushes towards Greenland. And look at this, a real potent northerly wind this time next week. Look at that, real direct northerly, really quite chilly. And again, if this was in a month or two's time, we would be seeing some really cold conditions. And if this was November, December time, we would be seeing a lot of snow showers with this. And it would be bitterly cold. But because we are in the end of September, it is only just generally chilly weather. If you do look at those upper air temperatures, you can see the zero degree ice firm moves through. Potentially even the minus five touches on northern Scotland, perhaps, but mostly uh, just around zero to sort of minus two, minus three at the upper air temperatures. And if we do run this back uh, a couple hours, you can see we are in a very warm air mass, potentially towards the end of the weekend. Initially chilly, but some warmer air topples over before that real chilly air comes through. So it could be quite a potent weather front there with a very, very strong temperature contrast. So it could be quite a potent cold front moving through early next week, this time next week, really. So we have to keep an eye on that. It could be a lot of heavy rain along that weather front, gusty winds, things like that moving through again. If we look at the uh, potential equivalent temperature, look at that real blues there showing that it is very cold air mass 
moving southwards and again look at the temperature deviation look at that a good six to eight degrees below average as it sweeps through the united kingdom now if we actually go back to the area of the hva temperatures and see what's happening beyond that you'll be able to see that Yes, we could recover those temperatures briefly, but it looks likely to stay in a generally cool air mass. So you can see slightly warmer air comes in before another sort of northerly flow with some chillier air masses pushing in. Again, it doesn't look too cold, but it is well below average for this time of year. A little low pressure system spins up. That could be quite a severe little low there with some very strong gusty winds and heavy rain. Before, again, we get back into that sort of cooler and colder air masses in from the north. The proper sort of blocking pattern with those jet stream with the jet stream and the low pressure systems pushed well to our south this would be a very snowy situation if this was two or three months time i feel like we end up saying this sort of every year we get these real cold synoptics in september or sometimes even into like april time as well but it's just not quite in the season to seeing any snow and i know a lot of people watching this do like to see some good snowfalls um this would be perfect synoptics for that but unfortunately we are way too early in the year to be seeing, or way too early in the autumn, really, to be seeing anything wintry at all. The one thing we have to keep an eye on, though, is because we have blocking to the north over towards Greenland, it does shift the jet stream to the south. And what could happen is low pressure gets trapped in the Atlantic. And we could actually bring up a southerly wind towards the end. That's always the risk with blocking. We sometimes see it in the winter as well. Blocking uh, well, it actually happened last winter when we thought really cold weather was going to come around in December. The blocking didn't dissipate, but the positioning shifts so that northerly flow or easterly flow. We're going to see all that air spilled out towards Iceland. And what we got was a southerly flow like this GFS is doing right at the end, actually bring up a very warm air mass towards the end. But very cold towards Iceland and Scandinavia, but very warm towards France and the UK. So with blocking, there's always a warm side and a cold side to the block. Generally, when we see blocking towards the UK, up towards Greenland and stuff, we normally are on the cold side. But if we see something like this, we can be on the warm side. So the blocking that gives us cold air over the next 10 days or so, perhaps towards early October, could start to give us something a lot warmer. But it is right in the extended range. I think the cold weather uh, before that is uh, is much more likely. Um, and that's what we need to focus on at the moment. And you look at the temperature deviation, you see it's 10 degrees, potentially above average there, poking into the southeast, but very cold towards Iceland and Scandinavia. So yeah, as I said, two sides to the blocking here. Now, if we go to the GEM run and see what that is showing over the next 10 days, again, high pressure built in at the moment. Low pressure pushes in, but it gets squeezed away. And eventually, as heads swore next week, we see that real potent northerly, really chilly. And the low pressure system is directly over the top of us, so just to our east. So there'll be some very strong winds here. Look at those 10 meter wind speeds. Very strong winds, very cold. Look at the dew points well down towards freezing, so really chilly. Temperature deviation. Thick blues moving in, good six to eight degrees below average, really cold indeed. And the raw upper air temperatures freezing at Andrew THB, maybe even minus five pushing in for eventually that low clear to our east. And we stay in a cool northerly flow, but because it's not direct, it's a bit cut off from the Arctic now, it is a less chilly wind flow, but it is still cold, still generally below average. So the GM run, very similar to the GFS, shows us a real potent northerly flow, real chilly, uh, real chilly run here from around six, day six to day 10. And this sort of synoptic we're seeing here around next Monday, that would be widespread heavy snow if this was in two months even middle to end of november this would be widespread snow so yeah real real interesting seeing these sort of synoptics early in the autumn we do though regularly see it and every year we do think perhaps could this be signs for the winter and then sometimes it is but sometimes it's not we can see extensive blocking in september october and then it completely dissipates as soon as the polar vortex takes over into the deep midwinter so we'll have to keep an eye on it but it is encouraging signs if you want some cold weather or at least early winter cold weather but of course with the energy crisis this year i don't think the best thing for the country is colder weather but the weather gods typically will unfortunately probably provide us some snow this winter just thinking about it um, uh, just thinking about uh, coincidences here, it's just been an absolute coincidence. The one winter that we don't want snow, we want generally milder conditions, average to above average winter, we're going to get a cold winter. That would just be coincidence, but we'll have to see how it plays out. And if we see these synoptics continue over the next few weeks and months, then it could be cold. But we'll keep an eye on it. If you go over to the ECMWF and see what that's showing over the next 10 days, again, high pressure building at the moment, low pressure moving in, but squeezed by those highs. 
and then we see big amplification, and it's because of X, uh, X hurricanes there moving in. Uh, that's Fiona, I think that is there, that's moving through uh, the Caribbean at the moment. It's turning into a major hurricane, quite severe. That does allow amplification of the jet stream. As I said, these why these tropical systems and looking at them are quite uh, important, even though this tropical system goes nowhere near the UK. It causes a ripple effect in the jet stream. That's why we see this major northerly wind, real cold around next Monday and Tuesday. Look at the upper air temperatures, around freezing at Andrew of THPA. Not quite as much of a cold depth there, but still widely down towards freezing at Andrew of THPA, moving through at day 10, still with that blocking to our north, and we are sort of sat under these lows, sliding lows, a lot of unsettled conditions, and it would be generally quite cold. Look at the temperature deviation, a lot of blues there from day 6, day 7, all the way to day 10, so considerably colder weather looking likely there from the east of the F today. If you go over to the ensembles, look at the GFS ensembles, you can see it is pretty much uh, consistent now that it's going to be around or below average for the foreseeable future. You can see some big drops there, including the operational run. Not all the ensemble members are on board, but quite a few, perhaps a half, uh, maybe a third to a half, are pulling in those northerly winds around day six, day seven, and then perhaps once again into early October. But they all are generally around or below average, and of course it will be colder than this if this, uh, or at least what the consensus at the moment does come off, because we have got those milder outliers around 10 to 15 degrees angel of THPA that will diminish uh, in the next few days if the colder synoptics um, are the ones that we're going to see. Precipitation has increased, but it's not amazingly high, because remember a northerly airflow is a generally drier air mass, um, it is producing a lot of convection, but not massive weather fronts, that's more from a westerly or southwesterly flow, so that's why we're not seeing major precipitation spikes yet, because the ensemble has no forecast convection to well, which is the main precipitation source from a northerly uh, or easterly winds. So we have to keep an eye on that, but generally really quite chilly. And again, if we have a look at these dew points, you can see generally pretty low. Again, still some remaining high, but you can see perhaps around the last five days of September into early October, a lot of dew points getting down towards the low single digits, perhaps even freezing, which is incredibly cold for this time of year, considering we could still see dew points uh, on average around 10 to 15 degrees. But yeah, it could be really cold in the foreseeable future. Remember, zero degrees is what we need for wintry precipitation, what we need for snow. So we are getting that sort of air mass in. Again, it won't snow because the air temperatures are way too high, but the upper air temperature which is the dew points are uh, almost conduce, conducive of snow. And I wouldn't be surprised if we did see this northerly airflow over the higher ground in Scotland, the Cairngorms, so towards Ben Nevis, we could be seeing some snowflakes potentially. Uh, as we did see a few uh, last week as well, we could see even more extensive uh, with this sort of northerly spell. If you compare it to the ECMWF ensembles, though, you can see it is very similar. Most of the ensemble members are, for the foreseeable future, around or below average. A lot of uh, precipitation spikes as well, but nothing too extensive. Perhaps a cluster around the 24th and into early October as well. So it's generally unsettled, but as I said, a northerly flow is driest direction. So it's mostly convection-based, but we can still see persistent rain at times. If we see some of those sliding lows that particularly the GF, GM and the ECMWF was showing. But yeah, generally below average looking really quite chilly, upper air temperatures touching on freezing, yeah, re looking really chilly indeed to end September and start October. Again, could this be signs for the winter? Who knows? Um, as I've said before, that we have seen major blocking in early autumn and then see nothing in the winter at all. Sometimes we see no blocking in the autumn and say major blocking in the winter. So we'll have to see what happens, but there is quite big blocking around at the moment being caused partially by those ex-tropical systems being bringing big amplification in the jet stream. So it could bring some very changeable and interesting conditions over the next few weeks. And at the moment, it looks likely to bring some cooler, uh, potentially even colder, unsettled weather over the next 10 days or so. So make sure you do stay tuned because it is going to be chilly out there. You're going to need your coats. If you are out early in the morning, you may even need your hats and gloves um, if you are out um, around sort of 6, 7 a.m. So yeah, looking really chilly indeed. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, uh, and I'll see you again for another video soon.